Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am now known as the Horror Shark. I was originally the Horror Show host, but a little rebranding never really hurts. Um, so uh, today I'm here with Brad Carter, the author of Cruel Jaws, um, and the upcoming Night of the Demon release from Severn Films. Um, so say hello, Brad. Hey guys, what's up? So I have some questions here, and uh, we can um, talk about your experiences with Severin and everything and how everything your um, writing style and influences have been sure. and uh, then we'll just kind of talk about stuff afterwards right on has writing been a lifelong passion of yours yeah it has it's the really the only if you asked me when I was like eight like what I want to be when I grow up I got a set of writer I think like as soon as I figured out that books were like written by people that people that made stories up um that's what i wanted to do um and so it's uh yeah i mean as long as i can remember i've always you know written little stories and um then i went to uh went to school uh studied creative writing in college and um you know just started sending stuff out for about a decade before my first book came out. So, uh, you know, got to be dedicated, you know. Yeah, definitely. What was your first book? Um, actually, yeah, I've got it right here. It's a, uh, it was, where we go, The Big Man of Barlow. That was a, it's a, a Bigfoot buddy comedy. It's not really a horror thing, although yeah. it's pretty much aimed at people that like uh, Legend of Boggy Creek, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but it was just kind of an unclassifiable book. Um, you know, the main character was gay, but it wasn't really an LGBT thing. Uh, it was funny, but, you know, also the humor was kind of offbeat. So it was just really, I got like the nicest rejection letters ever. <laughs> Go, and you ever kind of tread water softly <laughs> with that one. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, once once that one came out, then the doors were kind of open for me, and so I've been publishing about a book a year since. That's good. When did that one come out? Uh, 2012. Oh, so you've been have, you have like ten books out almost. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the um, Night of the Demon will be number nine. Nice. So, and um, you know, I've got I've got one in the pipeline, uh, which I, I don't think I'm supposed to talk about. Oh no, that's fine. You don't have to mention anything that you can't um, say. And, uh, yeah, I've got a couple things sort of in the works that, um, you know, since I've started doing film novelizations, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not uh, as free to talk about, I always want to wait till the company yeah. announces something before I blab about it. Uh, yeah. I got a couple more things after uh, Night of the Demon that are uh, in the pipeline for, I guess, 2022, maybe 23. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um how was uh, finding out that you were accepted to be the novelization or, um, author of Cruel Jaws from Severn? How was that experience for you? I was, you know, when I first started it, um, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not going to like this. I'm working with, you know, source material. It's not what I'm used to. Uh, but it turns out um, I really had a blast doing it. And um, it sort of combined, because it combined writing and horror movies, which are like my two. Yeah. Uh, passions in life and it was like i kind of hit the sweet spot and then um you know after after it came out i, I realized oh, holy shit i'm kind of good at this yeah. and i think even though like probably my old writing professors would say it's like one step above prostitution uh, <laughs> i guess i'm just really happy being a hoe <laughs> so, I, i've really i really like writing them um Severin gives me a, a pretty long leash um, as far as what I can invent and add. Yeah. And so um, I don't feel like constricted in uh, any other way. I did write uh, another novelization for another um, uh, movie label. And I'm just, I, you know, there's been some weird stuff with the business end of it. And so I'm not sure it's actually going to see the light of day. But um, that company was a little more specific about what they wanted but severin you know just kind of opened the door and said go go nuts and yeah 
they're kind of like more free range. Um, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when I read Cruel Jaws, um, you really brought out like every character in that movie. Like even the smallest characters, like the nurse in the hospital and the deputy. Right. It's like everyone's got this role in this story. Yeah, there's not much to that. I mean, I imagine the screenplay, if you could ever dig it up, would be like about 70 pages, maybe. And so to get about, you know, I don't remember how long, like 250, 300 pages out of it, you have to add a lot. I mean, the you know, Cruel Jaws, the characters are pretty thin. So um, to make yeah. them pop on the page, I just necessarily had to had to add, you know, a lot of stuff. And that was, you know, that's where the fun came in for me. <laughs> Were you a fan of Cruel Jaws or Night of the Demon before doing the novelizations, or had you ever seen them? Uh, Cruel Jaws, no. I'd never actually seen it. I knew it by reputation, mm -hmm. um, just you know because of all the, the legal wrangling and yeah. the history of it. Uh, Night of the Demon, yeah, because uh, the, the video nasty thing has always been something that's interested me. And also, um, you know, when I was writing my first book, I saw every – Bigfoot movie imaginable <laughs> just to uh, sort of get in the headspace because a, yeah. a big portion of that book is about shooting a, a Bigfoot film. And uh, so I watched a lot of them. So that, that one I had seen and um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm a fan of it. I, I, I love, you know, exploitation film from that era is like my favorite. And so, um, and by that point uh, it's, you know, it was the third novelization that I've worked on. And, uh, you know, I'm just kind of in the zone with it. It's, uh, it was a lot uh, quicker, um, a lot easier to just uh, to knock that one out. I think I wrote it in like three months or something absurd like that. But, <laughs> yeah, how long did it take, take you to write Cruel Jaws? Uh, you know, probably maybe about five months. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to, to remember exactly when I started it. Um, but, uh, you know, for a while, I, I think with that one, I kind of, uh, you know, I had to tiptoe around it. It was kind of hard to get started and get the rhythm of it. But once I caught it, you know, once I figured out kind of what I was doing with it, uh, the process of novelization is a little different than just making up your own novel. So Yeah, you have to kind of follow the guidelines of what the movie had. And... Yeah, yeah, and figure out where the spots that need filling in are um, and just kind of the main thing is figuring out each uh, where the chapters are and who the point of view characters are. And uh, I tried to uh, approach uh, Cruel Jaws like a uh, game, like the Song of uh, Ice and Fire books, you know, where each chapter is a point of view. Yeah. And so I just watched the movie a few times to figure out uh, this scene is mainly about this character. And, well, and I just made an outline and then just it was just a matter of filling in the blanks. You think of Krill Joe's when you saw it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first response, honestly, was, is there enough here for me to write a book? <laughs> and I, I remember asking uh, David Gregory from uh, Severin, you know, can I take, you know, what kind of creative license can I take here? Because, I, you know, I can probably get you 100 pages out of what's actually on the screen mm -hmm. and uh he's the two things we discussed we said you know just go ahead and go nuts with it do your thing and the other was uh but the movie's pretty tame like yeah. especially yeah. for a lot of the material that severin releases and uh so i wanted to make it a little more on brand for them and sort of turn up the yeah the sleaze, sleaze. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, um, was quite a, it was hard to do with Night of the Demon, but I, I think I actually managed to get a little more in there. Oh, that, that yeah, I was wondering little... about that. I was like, was it going to be like on the level of Cruel Jaws, or is it going to be kind of subdued? But... <laughs> <laughs> well, the source material already was pretty sleazy. Yeah, in a lot of ways, and um, but then also strangely, like the dialogue is strangely clean in that movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I was able to play around a lot with that, and I, you know, I, I did. I did add a few subplots that I think <laughs> it up a little bit. So, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I did the same basic uh, framing thing where a guy wakes up in the hospital and he's being mm -hmm. questioned. Um, I just like with Cruel Jaws, I, I sort of, uh, I like the idea of novelizing these like 40 year old movies and then acting like there might be a sequel. Yeah. So, 
and that were people really liked that with cruel jaws and um <laughs> you know this is these are sort of like fan service for me and it, that's you know i don't feel like it's me selling out or anything because i'm a fan of this stuff too so um mm -hmm. yeah i um I, I sort of kept the structure intact, but uh, I added uh, some more, uh, you know, some subplots to kind of amp up the tension. Like, and stuff like, like another that. fucking That's campfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw that post. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the chapter titles. Um, that's always like the last thing I write. When I, yeah. You know, I've like revised the book and made my second and third pass and got it drafted pretty tightly and then i just go back and, <laughs> and I have the chapter breaks numbered but then i just start titling them and um that i had a few funny ones in uh, cruel jaws and when people notice that stuff it's you know yeah. that, that makes my day <laughs> because the, i'm just trying to crack myself up most of the time i was thinking like holy crap there's a lot of campfires in this yeah book. <laughs> And like each each of those chapters starts with like dudes sitting around a campfire, and it's like holy crap, another fucking campfire! And then <laughs> well, there's your title, Brad. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna really get into Severin's possible like controversy with Universal with Cruel Jaws's release. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's um, stuff that you can talk about. But if yeah, I don't I don't think I'm supposed to talk about. It. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people will be like, why didn't you ask me that question? I'm like, well, because I don't think you can answer it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I can, we all, I think we, early on we discussed that it was a possibility that there could be some yeah. trouble. Yeah. Um, I'm not really certain exactly where the book fits into all that as far as, um, you know, if it's ever going to be available in print again. Yeah. Um, I, That's why I have three copies. <laughs> yeah, I would like I would like it too. Um, I think you know, for one thing, it sold pretty well. Um, yeah, and um, it is sort of a separate thing from the uh, the movie, but uh, all that stuff's above my pay grade. Um, yeah, no. Um, I wish I knew what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I have one copy for reading one copy to keep with my regular books and then one copy to keep with the Severn films. So it's, yeah. it's all perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, I, had, I had an idea that something might happen like, like with the last shark in the eighties when I got pulled from theaters, like maybe something will happen with cruel judges. Cruel judges yeah, probably think, snag as many as I can. I think like the, I mean, the director of uh, night of the demon at least is aware that the book exists. So I don't think we're going to have any sort of, any sort of trouble there it's a yeah. uh, it's a I, that's uh as far as uh the rights and everything go i don't think there's any kind of controversy there so from my experience when reading cruel jaws it was like okay in cruel jaws you see you hear tiger shark but you see a great white or a yeah. or whatever <laughs> or whenever there's certain shots um, but in Cruel Jaws, the novelization, you, I actually was able to picture that there was a tiger shark there instead of me just putting in this filling in the blanks of the Jaws scenes. Um, yeah. So that was really cool because, like, in the opening scene, I'm, no, not the opening scene, the part where the girl gets eaten and she's laying limp in his jaws. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's, that's really effective in that aspect. Um, but what, were, what was it like for you to write about this shark attacking people in, in visceral ways? Like, was it fun or was it a challenge to make it the imagery strong enough to resonate with the reader or? um you know not i get for one thing i had to learn way too much about sharks for something that's you know <laughs> kind of silly pro i mean i approached it like a real book you know anything with my name on it mm -hmm. uh but you know it, it's different material and i'm usually so i know a ton about sharks and um once i sort of had uh, look you know sort of done as much research as i was gonna do i could i could visualize it a little a little easier but one thing I've, i i do a lot of um writing workshops where i you know teach people how to or kind of point them in the right direction with stuff about uh writing this kind of genre fiction as i say to just you know imagine it like a movie in your head and think of how the director would frame the shot what would be on the screen and then just describe it um and so you know there's there's not a lot of uh a ton of shark carnage in the movie you know yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, they didn't actually have a, any 
sharp. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I just kind of thought, well, what would what would Bruno Mattei like like to have done? <laughs> yeah, if he had the money. And, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It was, uh, you know, I just kind of, uh, I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to write it seriously. I mean, the material may be seriously, but I'm going to make, I'm going to give it the full effort. And uh, I think that's what, frankly, I think, um, you know, me not half-assing it like I probably could have um, is why I got, I've got i gotten asked to do more of these things. Nice. So, um, and you said you saw, like, a whole bunch of Bigfoot movies. Do you have your favorite picked, or do you, is it always going to be Night of the Demon, or is there another one that that's a, you like more? Or... <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you can't really talk about Bigfoot movies without uh, Legend of Boggy Creek. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so that I mean, you know, that's the one I saw when I was a little kid. My dad told me that Boggy Creek was in, you know, the, the part in the neighborhood park scared the crap out of me. Uh, but, um, but you know, I mean, always Night of the Demon from now on is going to be a sentimental favorite because uh, I mean, there are probably people who've watched it more than me, but yeah. not many because you know, uh, as I'm writing it, I, I have to watch it kind of continually. So. Um, I don't, you know, Night of the Demons a, a whole different thing from, from uh, Legend of Boggy Creek. Um, yeah, it's like the Legend of Boggy Creek um, meets Abominable or something. <laughs> right. But I did get to pull a quote from uh, Lyle Blackburn, who, if you, if you don't know him, is uh, like the, the Bigfoot expert and and uh, a really cool guy. And uh, so I, I got to I got his permission to pull a quote for the first of the book. Um, <laughs> which was really which was really nice um, and uh you know he's an he's an expert so i like to be <laughs> to be able to put something from an act a person who actually knows stuff about this whereas i just make shit up you know do you have any plans for cruel jaws too even though presumably severin took them off the say because universal made them if so what would the title be given the ending of the first book and there are that's a spoiler question because yeah, right. There's jellyfish, and I'll, I'll save that for the end. I'll add a spoiler section, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, cruel tentacles, cruel. That's, that's I was gonna say, like, cruel, tentacles <laughs> cruel jelly, cruel jelly. Uh, <laughs> jelly I, you, know, the <laughs> I, I, you know, it was kind of like a joke, and I, honestly, I thought uh, David might ask me to cut it just yeah. because it, it is not in any way related to the film and that, you know, changing the ending of something is yeah. pretty, it's kind of a bold move. But uh, for one thing, I thought like in that, that whole, that whole chapter, the epilogue with the, the government thing and then the, the jellyfish, I thought I, I had some really strong writing in there. So I was like, I hate to see this go, but um, now nah, he didn't have any objection to it. And I thought, uh, you know, it was just kind of a joke, but I hadn't, uh, you know, it had crossed my mind. You know, I could, I could conceivably write something like this. Um, I don't know. Maybe that would be a good way to sneak it back into print. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's interesting. You know, if uh, it's one of those things, like I'm a, you know, I'm not Stephen King. I'm a working writer, um, so I have to uh, stay busy. And a lot of the these days. Um, being like a a single father and everything, like the paycheck's got to be there, you know. Um, sad to say, um, but if someone wanted to pay me to do it, by all means, I, you know, I could. That's something I could knock out, especially with the the characters already there for me. I know it's already all set in place. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one I could just, you know, crank out pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, so did you have anything you want to say to your fans or readers? Um, just everybody, thanks for reading. I mean, like, you know, readership's in decline, and um, I'm, I'm thankful for every single person that reads the book and takes the time to drop me a line. You know, I'm not hard to find on Facebook. Um, and um, it's, uh, you know, my family's always been real supportive, so... Uh, from my parents on down the line. And so, you know, I just, anyone that wants to drop me a line, and, um, talk writing, I'm more than happy to res- I respond to everything and, uh, and I keep reading. And if you really like these novelizations, you know, beyond just like as a collector's item, which is cool too, uh, you know, let, let the company know and, uh, 
you know, let them know you want more. And I'll, I'll keep, as long as you, people are reading them, I'll keep writing them. So. Yeah, that's why I reviewed it. I'm like, I got to review this book. It's got to be up there because it's like, I got to get that. The word spread so that maybe this person or another or Brad or someone else could uh, write another novelization for Severin because that's just really cool that they do novelizations or request novelizations for such older films. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, and it was sort of a dream gig for me anyway because not only do I, you know, love the, you know these uh, physical media in general, but Severin has long been one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I mean. Um, don't know if you could see that, but uh, <laughs> well, there it is. But I had that before I wrote the book. So there it is. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> so yeah, this was like a dream gig for me, and it, getting to do it again has been really cool. And yeah, yeah. As, as many as they want me to write, I'll, I'll crank them out. So thank you all for watching. I am Brian Gatto, the Horror Shark. Make sure to check out Brad Carter's novelizations, and where can they find you? Uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I have a mainly, a, you know, I have an author page. It's Brad Carter author. Or, um, you know, you can just find Brad Carter in, uh, in Arkansas with this mug. Um, you know, you can, I, I don't, I don't really separate my personal page. So, um, yeah. you can find me there. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, as long as, uh, people play nice and, everybody's welcome to, <laughs> to, to hit me up on there yeah and um thank you all for watching and make sure to support this content and mine <laughs> sure to like comment on as well as share this video and if you want to support the channel through patreon that's cool too and if you don't you can always send money to paypal at horror show 37 gmail.com but if you don't want to support me with any money you can just hit that notification bell to be notified every time i make a new video and as always subscribe. Uh.